Howdy nerds. It has been a while. I am back from Moldova. Back to the good old life here in Richfield, Utah. Conroe Games, so sorry about the voice. I picked up some bug in Moldova, bringing it back to share with everyone here in Utah. <laughs> sure no one's been exposed from my neck of the woods to whatever has been going on for years there. Some sort of cold, but anyway, voice is starting to come back and yeah, I tried to do some footage there in Moldova, but man, I got super sick the last week and lost my voice. And so that was when I was planning on doing some videos. So hopefully I can c compile together some videos of what I took at the game store and the uh, kind of interview with the store owner and, and show you what gaming is like in beautiful Moldova. So bittersweet to be back, definitely miss it. It is a lovely country, super underrated. Again, I'll try to have a video uh, at least showcasing my experience there in Moldova. But we are back here in the good old Utah and have a lot of work to come back to. We got Buttons, who was super mad I left, but he's he's good again for coming back. We got the good old Chloe here. And we actually have a full store back here of, of the Commander players, so we won't interrupt them too much, but they are in their element of good old Commander. So again, everything is going pretty good here at Gonroll Games. Um, not a lot going on, I don't think so, in the market. Need to check some things. I know we had some like Modern Horizons and Star Wars Unlimited that came out, and apparently those have been selling pretty hot. So things are going great. Um, and I have this to come back to. Hope you guys kind of like these kind of videos of what's going on. I think I'm gonna start doing this more often of just, you know, showcasing the work workload we have and kind of trying to kind of uh, just talking shop here. So got these boxes I have to go to. I'm assuming this is gonna be Star Wars Unlimited. Maybe let's unpack this and we'll give it a, give it a go. And I'll just talk to everybody about, there's Zach that's on the phone. Now he's going to be quiet now that I'm recording a video. Hi, Zach. <laughs> Everyone, big shout out to Zach for uh, taking on the store while I was gone. To Moldova. So yeah, so huge bucket list to cross off. I definitely want to go back. I think the next stop for me is going to be Ukraine. Um, of course, not until it is safe to get into Ukraine. And I think it'll be fun post, I want to say post war with like a grain of salt because, or not a grain of salt, grain of, that is the word. Sorry, I'm so jet lagged. I can't even think, put two, like two sentences together, uh, two words together to make a sentence. Uh, had a uh, flight delayed, had a 10 hour uh, flight back from uh, Poland to New York and then I had a massive layover in New York. Took forever to get out of Vegas. Oh, anyway, so yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, so. Moldova, great experience there. Um, not any magic, Lorcana, Star Wars, that has not hit the country yet. I think I'm gonna to put together kind of a little care package and send to the store. Really cool owner. He's got an awesome shop going for him. It made me like really rethink my life about, you know, how I've got kind of the privileged life. I hate using that word because that's such a dumb word. But like the grind the dude has done in Moldova to make his tiny shop. And he's at a, when I say tiny shop, it was a tiny shop, just a few shelves. And he, he explained like how he had to get board games they, with the sanctions. So, so sanctions still hit these other Eastern European countries, even though they're targeted at Russia. Russia is still the manufacturer. There's a thing called Hobby World that manufactures all of the board games for Russian speaking countries. And it's not just like Russian, it manufactures the languages um, of sometimes even like Romanian. I mean, Ro board games in Romanian are very, very rare to begin with, but some of these other Slavic languages, uh, Polish, uh, Ukrainian, uh, this, this manufacturer called Hobby Worlds actually manufactures the board game versions of them, but the sanctions have actually crippled their ability to get them to, you know, Russian speaking places. Now, again, I'm not gonna get, maybe in the, in the future I will get political. Um, I don't know. It, there's a time and a place for, you know, politics and especially not here on a game store channel. It seems to rub everyone the wrong way because everyone's so polarized. And I have that lovely, uh, I kind of have that space of not really being in a political party. I, I, I don't subscribe to, you know, traditional poli American politics. So I end up just rubbing everyone the wrong way to start getting into it. But I definitely do want to eventually start talking about like the, the you know, the war in Ukraine and how that's affected Eastern Europe and as far as the gaming world. And again, shout out to these people, like Pavel, the, the store owner of, uh, uh, of the game store that I'll be showing, um, and the grind he's been able to do, this, the, the passion for board games has allowed you know, Moldova to experience, at least to uh, have a place to get board games. 
Um, and it's kind of rough too, because he's got to compete with the big kind of big box stores there that do have access to board games and sell at kind of like the bookstores will sell board games. So they really have a big board game culture. The car games really haven't hit there yet, but man, I'm really rambling off topic here with it. But anyway, I think it'd be fun to explore that and, you know, maybe start getting more into, you know, the real world consequences like geopolitics and, you know, our foreign policy and whatnot. And again, it's a very polarized uh, topic that, uh, maybe when I get the courage to go into, because like I said, my, my opinions on Ukraine and Russia are not really on either side of the coin. I think that both people have the picture wrong of, of what's going on. And I want to stay a little more sympathetic of like towards the Russian people, but at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, now being closely involved with Ukrainian and, and, and whatnot is, it is a very, um, uh, it's a very complicated situation. But anyway, it was, it was very interesting to, to talk to Pavel and, and get his perspective and kind of, like I said, the grind he has to go through. It takes months for him to get board games. Um, it's, there are a lot of people now that don't want to speak Russian. They want like games in either English or Romanian, and that's very rough to come by. But then there's, you know, people that still, you know, do want to speak their native tongue and still, still want games in Russian and don't want to be, you know, associated. You know, that's, that's something that I heard very common over there is that, you know, Russia doesn't own the Russian language. So, you know, they should still have access to be able to, you know, buy things in, in their, their native tongue. But anyway, yeah. Moldova, crazy place. It's, it's a, a wonderful, amazing, if you're looking for an experience, if you're not really into like super touristy things, um, I highly recommend Moldova. Food is cheap there. The people are absolutely beautiful and, and wonderful and friendly. Um, had nothing but a great time with the locals and, and the people there. So pretty much in love with Moldova. Um, I wish it wasn't, you know, 6,000 miles away so I could actually visit there more often. Uh, and of course, that expensive uh, flight. So anyway, let's get to unboxing this thing. And there's Zach. Did he tell you the part where, where I had to watch the dogs for, for two and a half weeks? Yeah, so I guess, I guess shout out for Zach for, for making this possible. But yeah, now we're out to get to the grind. And like I said, it was a, a, a pretty inspirational to meet Pavel and be, like I said, privileged because I get board games in two days. It feels like like the effort that I put into to running a store and making these works is so minimal to what this guy does in, in you know Eastern Europe to make a game for possible. So it's kind of motivated me to be my, my worth ethic, ethic is definitely lacking and to start getting things back in order um, to, <laughs> you know, actually run a better gig here. So that's the good news of the trip. Um, again, bad news is I am a little heartbroken to, to have to leave and, you know, come back to it. But I still love, love the area here in Richfield, Utah. Love my customers, love all my, you know, supporters here on YouTube and whatnot. So again, I don't know. I don't know if this is a transition for me as I've been ranting in this video, but I don't know why people what people enjoy about my, my content. Um, but I've always loved just being a person out and kind of sharing uh, my stories and, and, and whatnot with the masses. So this is the way I guess I get my, out my extroverted energy. So anyway, what was I doing? Oh yeah, we were gonna unbox to see what's come in. So we got this sucker here with Star Wars Unlimited, which cannot be shipped yet, guys. I'm not breaking street date. Asmodee is cracking down. There have been stores that are now banned from ordering Star Wars Unlimited from breaking street date. So I will not break the street date for these suckers. This looks like these are gonna be what, starter kits? No, these are pre-release packs from Star Wars Unlimited. And again, I guess the going forward, I wanna start producing more videos. I know I sound like a broken record. Every couple months I do this, just, it's my procrastinator personality. I've learned to live with it. I guess everyone else needs to learn with it, live with it too. We have creative bursts of energy where uh, when I'm feeling it, then I'll create a ton. When I'm not, it's like chewing nails to try to get me to do stuff. So, um, uh, so videos, if you like, specific type of content. Let me know if you're here for like the box openings or just my rants or whatnot, or just like the unboxings of products. Um, I want to start tailoring this to, you know, what people actually want to see. Uh, so we have the Star Wars Unlimited uh, pre-release packs. This looks like it's gonna be more pre-release packs down here. Nope, this is gonna be the actual booster boxes. And again, the patrons that have ordered these suckers, these will be shipped out on the normal regular release date because I do not want to jeopardize my account. Uh, by shipping these suckers early. I don't know why Asmodee shipped the, I know they wanted to do the pre-release support, which again, I need to actually do the pre-release because I have people here that want to do it here at my store. So we will run it. And, and then we have the leftover boxes that will get shipped off during the regular release day. So this is gonna be the second set. The set uh, Star Wars Unlimited sold phenomenally well. They are still, I'm actually very impressed with Fantasy Flights because they have a track record of overprinting and then killing the game and then wondering what happened. And now they've seen like they've done the right thing here and they've actually slowed their roll 
um, and just let the market trickle things in and restock stores. They put a huge priority on restocking stores. So they give stores a couple boxes a week and it has just done phenomenally well for it because I had to beat this into people's minds. I don't know why people keep arguing with me at this point, but you can't, if you make a collectible card game, if you make a, a card game that costs money, you have to respect the value of that. You can't just overprint. And there are so many people that I've argued uh, tooth and nail until I'm blue in the face about overprinting a Magic the Gathering, why that's a bad thing for the consumer, not just for me, not just for the store owner, not just for the people trying to make money on it. It ends up leaving a bad taste in everyone's mouth when things become so overprinted that it becomes no longer collectible. There is a balance that has to be adhered to, otherwise the games will die. Like it's, it's just human psychology and we can't change it. You can't make humans not be humans. It's something that, that we're just programmed to, you know, want to feel like our purchase purchases were valuable and if you if they did that with anything in life uh, then people actually you know there's been so many uh, studies in psychology of markets where you know price actually affects satisfaction okay so again i'm not going to argue with people about about you know game pieces and how things should be affordable because i do still think in the scope of things these collectibles are quite affordable for the experiences you actually get for them so anyway i've been very impressed with at least fantasy flights handling of star wars unlimited i think it's pretty good or a little bit worrisome it seems like now they're overprinting. uh the last two sets have not done well comparatively and there are already starting to be some warning signs about the bubble of Lorcana. There are a lot of, I've been looking at some metrics on like uh, activity based on like Twitter and Instagram and you know other social medias, like the engagement with Lorcana is actually an imbalance with how much products have sold. And so eventually those, are, those paths will cross to where the true market value of a product will, will you know, come to fruition. And in, in my opinion, or can is a little bit overblown. Again, I'm not going to uh, say that it's, uh, you know, uh, dead or it's going to go that direction. I just think that, that uh, Lorcana needs to uh, reevaluate exactly their true demand and their true supply. And maybe they need to start, you know, fiddling with the numbers so that it does come back to uh, where, you know, those things, those roads do need to meet. So uh, again, anyway, so what else do we get? Uh, these suckers do need to sh be shipped off ASAP. I believe these are going to be the Modern Horizons uh, gift bundles. So I'm going to go ahead and crack one of these suckers and see what we get in there. And I'll get these shipped off. And I am late on these ones because I was gone and I didn't want to put the burden on Zach to actually get these suckers shipped off. So I apologize to everyone that uh, has to wait for these. Looks like we have some Pokemon here. That's another market I haven't touched for a while. Like I keep telling myself I need to do a Pokemon channel just so that I can actually... Um, Unfortunately, I don't have any like fans from Pokemon. So a lot of my good patrons are people that just want to support the channel and don't really care too much. Like they buy from me, they know they can get products for reasonably the same, but they buy from me to support me, which is, which is awesome. Um, but with Pokemon, the only time I can sell Pokemon is if people can make money off of it. And at that point, I just might as well make money out of it. So Pokemon's kind of been weird. Uh, it's been overprinted with this type of stuff and then booster boxes are underprinted a lot of times. And so you get a lot of this stuff that gets, gets overloaded and then you have to, you know, painstakingly break these down for packs and stuff. And it's just a mess. So I haven't really been touching Pokemon in the Scarlet and Violet era. Uh, because it's just been not profitable whatsoever to we, we keep a few here for the shop so all these here like i do not sell these to patrons these are just you know i need like six to twelve boxes it will last me you know quite some time at my store we'll have you know locals pick these up uh, tourists pick these up and sell them but it's something i don't actively like try to uh, keep in stock or keep in, you know, and actually actively try to sell to patrons and, you know, on the online and whatnot. So I uh, haven't really touched Pokemon uh, that often, just been taking my normal allocations to keep me in good standing with distributors in case Pokemon does end up recovering. Um, unfortunately, Pokemon has these big swings where it becomes either so super profitable that then you can't get it, and then so absolutely dismally unprofitable uh, that it's just pointless to try to uh, pick it up. So I've always been in these dead zones with Pokemon, and I know you should play the long game, but as a store that where you really need to burn through products and burn through money, you can't just be holding on to stuff. Um, Pokemon just ends up being a liability at that point, um, as you don't want to be selling for losses over and over. Uh, but if, at, and oftentimes you just can't have that sort of like long term unless you're already at that point to where you can start hoarding on products and and whatnot. But we're still in the growing stage where I need to just just you know turn products and and whatnot. So I am again hope I'm making some sense here because like I said, I am feeling the jet lag like crazy. If you ever made that flight from Poland to New York 
Oh man. And then I had a, don't ever try to sleep in JFK airport. You get like one hour uh, before the chaos ensues. And then you'll finally like get your head down and actually start sleeping. I found a, a quiet spot in a corner uh, with the lights were off and there was no, it was a terminal that wasn't being used. And then the cleaning lady like bumped me and made me move my legs so she could vacuum under me <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, damn it, finally got to sleep. And this is what I get woken up to. At least it wasn't someone trying to steal from me. But anyway, yeah, I survived a 11 hour layover in JFK airport. Anyway, so we got the gift bundles here. So we got these uh, suckers now from Honor Horizons, which I will be shipping off. Typically, most patrons like me to bundle this with other products so they can save on shipping because shipping a bundle will cost anywhere from 10 to like 15 bucks to ship this sucker. But this has the nine play boosters in here and then uh, an, an additional collector's booster and a pretty cool dice in here and some foil lands and whatnot. It does look like it is power balance is going to be the uh, promo for this. So this is one thing I cannot stand for Magic the Gathering is they're too lazy to even change the promo. Like what is the di what is the point for these gift bundles? All it has is a product that already exists with collector boosters and play boosters. It's got a different dice and a different um, uh, box, but why not change the promo? I, it's just, ah. Uh, or at least like since it's a gift, make the promo random or something. I don't know. It's just, it's just still feels so lazy. Where's the coast? You are the laziest company that they, I don't understand it. The, the, this, well, what gives me about Wiz Coast, why I always harp on them is this could be something that it would be so epic. If this company was managed like properly and didn't have so many just duh problems with, with, uh, uh, I, that's what, that's what just gets me. It just gets me. I'm ranting again with it because like, this is just something that the, such a, like the, the jump starts and uh, aftermath and the, like this, like these are just such duh improvements. That they can, simple improvements they can make to products to make them better. And it's like, how have they not thought of changing this? Like the only thing I think of is just like, eh, they like do a cost analysis. Uh, it's not worth it to make it to the promo for these, these products. Then why make the damn product? Anyway, I am ranting. I am doing ranting. So that's what I got going in there. I don't think I got anything else that's really uh, cool in these boxes. And again, I apologize. These will get shipped off. Uh, this was kind of a once in a lifetime trip. Hopefully not. Like I said, I am motivated too. If one thing's motivated, it is to fund another trip because now I'm broke. So it's time for me to make money back uh, so I can start uh, looking forward to going to another trip. And again, next time I go, I do want to do things a little bit different. Like I, I didn't do the recording of like the game store and kind of the, the city footage and stuff like that. I was, I was planning on uh, relaxing for a week and then doing it the, the second week. And then I got super sick the second week. And then uh, the person I was with got sick uh, after I did. And then so I was taking care of her for the last few days. And so that was kind of the last week was just kind of uh, not really getting out. And I actually didn't have a voice. So I, I couldn't even record videos if I wanted to because my voice was completely gone. I uh, got a sinus infection and everything was out there. So anyway, it'll be it's good to be back and good to be back in the swing of things. And again, I apologize for this type of video if this is not your forte of just, you know, have me rant and talk about absolutely nothing here. But I appreciate everyone that has stuck with me uh, through the time. I do have some big plans for the Patreon and for the kind of the online store. I'll be looking into getting a website funded. Um, so if you have any good leads for me of people that are good for designing those stuff, I, you know, I'm, I'm all ears for that. But eventually what I want to do is want make this, the process a little more streamlined and give people a, a little more, uh, and I, I, oftentimes I, I almost feel like my service is a little bit like pen and paper <laughs> at that point with the kind of Google forms and things we do. And so I probably should modernize that. And again, after the, um, I'll have to show you the guy's website that had for his store. And when he's got this amazing professional web, website and service for his little tiny store, it just makes me feel like, geez, what have I done? I'm kind of lazy. But anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be looking forward to get back in the swing of things. So if you're our patron, we're back to ordering, we're back to business as usual. We have the 4th of July that's coming up. There's just going to be a hiccup, not on my end, just because the holidays, everything's closed, can't ship things, can't even order from distributors. The 3rd, 4th, I believe like 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So yeah, it's going to be kind of a mess for that. But uh, anyway, uh, Bloomboro coming up, a lot, of, a lot of Pokemon stuff coming up. Other than that, we got a Lorcana set number five coming out, and we'll be covering all that stuff. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Kevin with Rogue, Rogue Deck Builder, Gone Rogue Games. Where am I? Yep, thanks for watching.